It is the night before the Wimbledon final. Djokovic versus Kyrgios is going to be electric. It's going to be fireworks. I am so pumped up. We got to talk about that. Also, Baker Mayfield is now a Panther. He gets traded from the Browns. He finally gets his move away from the Browns. What does this mean for Baker Mayfield, the Panthers, the Browns, with all that stuff that they got going on? Um, and also, you know, shout out to Nadal for a great Wimbledon. It's unfortunate that he had to, you know, lose his opportunity at a calendar Grand Slam because of an injury. It just sucks. It's something that's been a part of Nadal's career. You know, just constant injuries, constant battling with something. So, you know, shout out Nadal. You know, he's the biggest warrior on the tennis court. He's shown it numerous times in his career. I just want to give him a congratulations and uh well done at Wimbledon he made it all the way to the semifinals and hopefully hopefully he gets to play the U.S. Open they still haven't really see, said how bad it is but I, I do think he's gonna play the U.S. Open so wish him the best there <clears throat> but anyways let's get started Djokovic versus Kyrgios in the final of Wimbledon if I would have told you that at the beginning of the year you would have been like okay Djokovic is going for his fourth Wimbledon in a row that makes sense that adds up. I can see it. Who's going up against him? Is it going to be TC Paz? Is Berrettini going to make another run? Is, you know, Shapovalov going to get it together and make another deep run? Is it going to be someone like Zverev? Is it, is it going to be, you know, Alcaraz catching fire? Murray makes some magical comeback um, from his hip. I don't know. There's a lot of people that you could have seen. Nadal coming back from injury. There's a lot of people that you could have seen maybe challenging Djokovic for the Wimbledon title this year going into 2022 but as it turns out it is Kyrgios Kyrgios who has been widely regarded as one of the most talented players on tour but just because of his hothead um, his lack of concentration uh, no coach his easygoing attitude you know all of those things have is what everyone's talked about that has kept them from you know making super deep runs at uh, majors, winning a major. That's what everybody's been saying. And, you know, he finally got it together. So shout out to Kyrgios for, you know, winning that doubles at the Australian Open. And now, you know, he skipped the French Open. So he has made it to back, back-to-back back finals in majors that he's participated. Ones in doubles, ones in singles. It seems like he's getting his career together, man. So that's always great to see when players that have a lot of potential, players that have shown a lot of ability, a lot of promise from a young age, and they finally like seem to be fulfilling it. That's that's always great. It's always great as a Mexican fan. Carlitos Vela is one of the players that you know, and Giovanni dos Santos is one of those players that kind of like Curios. You know, they started out young. They won the U seventeen World Cup in two thousand five, and they made big moves. Kind of like Curios made you know deep run in Wimbledon at nineteen years old. Like that, they were playing for Barcelona, playing for Arsenal, and then their career slimmed out. And you hope that maybe when they got to their physical peak at the age of 26, 27, 28, that they would be able to, you know, wake up from that rut and fulfill that promise that they showed at a young age. Unfortunately for Mexico, neither of them really did it. Carlitos Bella a little bit with Sociedad, but Giovanni Los Santos didn't. So it's good to see Kyrgios coming of age, using that talent, fulfilling his potential. So now here we are at Wimbledon final, and you know it's, I think it's gonna be electric. I'm super pumped. I was pumped for Nadal versus Kyrgios, and whoever won that one, I was gonna be super pumped for the final. Obviously, there's no semifinal because Nadal got hurt, but Kyrgios versus Djokovic is gonna be electric. It's gonna be amazing. Kyrgios is two and zero against Djokovic. Djokovic has never beaten Kyrgios in his professional career, which is crazy to think about. Uh, but both of those were played in hardcore, and they were like, you know, a couple, several years back. So this is completely different. This is Wimbledon center court. Kyrgios has openly talked about how Djokovic has the advantage because he's been there before so many times. Um, he's won it six times, I believe, and three in a row. He's played in center court like almost every single match. He, he hasn't lost in like, I don't know how many years, how many matches. I believe he's going like on 20 now. So it's like something ridiculous where Kyrgios, this is new to him. Like he's feeling all the nerves. He's feeling all the, you know, emotions, butterflies in the stomach. He said he couldn't sleep on yesterday's presser. So obviously Djokovic should be the heavy, heavy favorite and the numbers show it. Uh, if you check the odds uh, anywhere, they're going to pretty much be minus 350 for 
uh, Djokovic, if you want to put a bet on him. And then for Kyrgios, is uh, plus 290. So you risk 100, you win 290. It's pretty good odds. Um, but with all that being said, you know, just want to congratulate Djokovic and Kyrgios. Djokovic, who hasn't had, you know, the pack, the most packed schedule so far because of his stances with, you know, coronavirus and his vaccinations and all that stuff. But we don't need to talk about that. All we need to say is for not having a packed schedule, for not coming in the best rhythm, for Djokovic to get to the final, very, very impressive. Although his draw wasn't the hardest and there was a lot of players missing from Wimbledon, still like amazing accomplishments for Djokovic to get to the final. And I do think, I, I know for a fact that he's going to put up a great match tomorrow. And Kyrgios, like I said, potential has always been there. He just needed to get it together. And it looks like he's finally getting it together. Hopefully, or not hopefully, but hopefully the truth comes out in that allegations that are against him. If if he did do that, then, you know, that's terrible. And he, he'll, he'll get his, you know, punishment. And uh, we'll see what the law decides. And But that's for another video. Strictly tennis. It, it's nice to see that he's finally fulfilling his potential. And he seems to be taking tennis a little more seriously. And for my prediction now, I do think that Kyrgios is going to cement a victory tomorrow he's gonna i don't know i know he's the heavy underdog and Djokovic is on a lot of people's minds the goat and this would just you know further his case as the goat but i just i just i just think Kyrgios is gonna make it three and oh man and i don't think it's something crazy Kyrgios serve is ridiculous it's been hot very hot this tournament and when his serve gets going it's it's a weapon like no other he he should be considered one of the serve bots in my opinion like the way the accuracy that he has on his serves, the cojones that he has on his second serve, where he, sometimes he'll hit a serve and it'll be like 130, and almost everyone on tour, second tour is going to come at you slower. Kyrgios is the type of guy that he might hit a 134, 135 on his second serve, and just you're just like, wow, this guy's ridiculous. The the confidence that he has on that racket on his serve is just amazing. Plus, a lot, almost all his shots are very low, close to the net. Um, so I think that's going to give Djokovic trouble. And for all the people that have been saying that Kyrgios lacks fitness, that he's never gone this deep in the tournament because, you know, he winds down as the tournament goes, Kyrgios looks fit. And I think it's going to help him. Obviously, it's going to help him that Nadal had to withdraw and he's going to go into the final fresh. Um, Nori was able to take one set, so it did take Djokovic four sets to get it done. And with all that being said, yeah, I think I just got to go to Kyrgios. Um, if you're if you're going for Djokovic, obviously, like, I got nothing to refute. Like, I just have, like, a little gut feeling. Like, you're going to come at me like, you know, he's won three in a row at Wimbledon. He's a reigning champion. He's been there the longest. He's one of the all-time greats. He looked great against Nori in the last three sets. He just dismantled Nori. Uh, he has a great serve himself. He's one of the best defensive players or the best defensive player of all time. Uh, maybe next to Nadal, he's probably the best returner of all time. So it doesn't matter if Kyrgios serves on fire. Djokovic is going to be able to return it. I, you know, I'm I'm trying to almost convince myself right there. But I think some way, somehow, I think Kyrgios is just going to get it done tomorrow. Like this is uh, sometimes more than just tennis. Like the whole storyline would just be ridiculous. Kyrgios, who has been under scrutiny his whole career as a tennis player, who, you know, er, like, Everyone talks about him. You go to any Kyrgios YouTube video. ATP kind of loves him, too. They, they put a lot of videos on YouTube showing his shots, 25 minutes of Kyrgios, ridiculous shot by Kyrgios. So if, even though he doesn't play the most, he does. He's very popular. And I think this would just be, like, an amazing story, an amazing 2022 for Kyrgios. With all the scrutiny, with, you know, playing, like, 14 matches a season, like, the last two years. To come into 2022 to win a doubles with his best friend in Kokonakis, which was an amazing story too, and to go into Wimbledon and win a singles championship, which almost everyone said that it would never get done. Um, if you look at any of the videos prior to this year, or even some of this year, that everyone was just so down on him, saying that he's never going to get it together. A lot of people gave up on him, and he said that he hasn't given up on himself. So I think it would be a great story. But let me know who, who you guys think. Obviously, if you go with Djokovic, nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I just listed all the reasons why he should win. And I almost convinced myself. But I do think, ultimately, Kyrgios pulls through. It's going to be electric. They were super friendly today on social media, on Instagram. They were, like, saying that winner, they're going to go to dinner after the game. And winner pays for it. And then Kyrgios said that they're going to go to the club and celebrate and go crazy. 
I think this is they're kind of trolling the the tennis community because we all know how like kind of upside the tennis community is. But I think it's gonna be crazy on court tomorrow. Like I could definitely see them yelling at each other. Djokovic, who's tempered himself uh, versus Nori, some of the fans were saying something, and he sh- straight up stared them down and l- looked them in the eye like two serves in a row, just stared them down. So Djokovic, he has that you know. He has, he definitely has that, that fiery attitude himself. And I don't even need to mention Kyrgios. He obviously has a fiery attitude. So I think tomorrow is going to be amazing. Must watch television. If you're not a tennis fan and you're listening to this, I, I suggest you, you watch it. Obviously, it's going to be hard to watch because it is in England. It is scheduled to start at 6 a.m. Western time and 3 a.m. Eastern time. So if you get a chance, if you're up partying, and it's 2.30 already. Just stay up a little extra 30 minutes. Catch the beginning. If if the first set doesn't, you know, catch your attention, then knock it out. If it does, stay up and watch it. It's going to be a great match. Baker Mayfield gets traded to the Panthers. He's no longer a Brown. They have finally split up. Good for them. Good for the Browns. Good for Baker Mayfield. This situation had to, they had to break up. There was no other way around it. No matter what the allegations and what the situations with Watson was, there was no way that the Browns and... Baker Mayfield were going to stay together. This had to be done. Ultimately, the Browns had to eat a lot of that contract in order for the Panthers to make that trade for Baker Mayfield. I'm not too surprised. It made sense. Like, Baker Mayfield is not a hot commodity at this point. But I do want to talk about the move. Um, For the Browns, you know, who cares? (laughs) Like, if, if Watson plays, if he's able to play, he's going to play. If he doesn't get to play, they have reset. They might trade for Garoppolo. You know, that's not the most exciting situation. Obviously, we'll see what happens with Watson, that terrible stuff. But with the Panthers, that's that's the one where there's a QB battle now. It's going to be Baker Mayfield or Sam Darnold. And I, after this trade, a lot of people are saying that Baker Mayfield is going to be the day one starter week one of the 2022-2023 season. And I just don't see it that way. I think, obviously... <laughs> I don't want to get confused. I don't want to get miscategorized and be considered a Sam Darner fan or defender or anything like that. Like, he did come out of UC and I like USC, but I know how USC quarterbacks struggle. And by no means do I have any attachment to Sam Darner. Not even like fantasy football. Like, he did not like save me one week and then I have this special connection to him because he was like a waiver wire darling. Like, I have zero connection to Sam Darnold. But I would like to say that Baker Mayfield played for the Browns. And although everyone clowns on the Browns for what they do, and, you know, they don't help themselves signing $230 million contract to Watson in the midst of this legal battle that he's going on right now. And that might be the worst contract ever, depending on what happens. Um, They have been a better team the last few years, basically since Baker got there. And it's not just because Baker got there. A lot of people are trying to say that, you know, it's because of Baker. It's not. Like, they really kind of got their shit together. They drafted better. They got some free agents. They got weapons everywhere for the most part. They had OBJ. They had um, Njoku. They got the tight end from Atlanta. I forgot his name. They got a lot of people. They got a lot of people. And they have Hunt. They had... Chubb, they had a lot of stuff going together. They have a great offensive line. He Baker Mayfield had more than enough help, and he still did not look good. Even last year when his numbers were like pretty good, um, and he was he took him to the playoffs and he won that game against the Steelers. He never he never looked like he was amazing. Even when he was putting up those numbers, like everyone looks at the numbers and yeah, they're pretty. They're pre- they're nice. They're nice numbers. And yeah, he beat the Steelers, but like you, everything, you got to take with context. Like those numbers look good, but they should have been so much better. If you guys watch the Browns, there's so many yards that got left on the field because Baker Mayfield, you know, just overthrew it a little bit or underthrew it. Wide receiver running wide open, and he throws it at his feet. So instead of getting some yak. He has to go to the floor and he gets, you know, touched down and he gets touched down. So, like, you know, the play ends where he touched the where he where he catches the ball, this hypothetical wide receiver. There's numerous plays. So I can't just say like one player. It could be Higgins. It could be Peoples Jones. It could be OBJ. It could be whoever you want to talk about. There's so many plays 
where there, there's just you, you leave a lot of meat on the bone like yeah you got a nice bite but there's a lot of meat on the bone that you left there and this is all with the great offensive line with two elite running backs one that you know could battle for the best running back in the league the other one who's the best backup running back in the league who some teams would love to have as their number one running back who was the number one running back for the Chiefs before he had um I forgot what was his allegations I think he hit his girl or something I, I, I don't remember but the point is elite running backs elite weapons OBJ looked amazing once he left he had a lot of help and he still never looked amazing or even like really above like really really good he, we could we could you know forgive amazing we could forgive really good but what his good was just good his bad was pretty bad and for the most part he was just mediocre and like that was his seasons rookie year you know really good second year you know below average to bad third year good to you know mediocre a lot of meat on the bone last year bad parentheses injury you know got to take it with a little bit of context but the Panthers are not that good they don't have we'll see how McCaffrey comes back elite running back when he's healthy they do have some wide receivers even though you know Roby Robbie on Anderson is not the most excited to have him but I think if you look offense on the offensive side the Browns and the Panthers and you compare them it's a downgrade for Baker Mayfield as far as personnel protection um so what I'm trying to say is I don't expect Baker Mayfield to just be unleashed that it was the Browns' fault that now that Baker Mayfield is going to have this cloud gone from his head, from his mental space, he's going to leave this toxic relationship. I don't expect them to just out of, out of nowhere break out and show that number one overall potential or you know status that he came into the league with. I honestly think he's going to struggle. I think either way, it, this, it, this is either going to play out they're going to they're going to he's going to win the starting job or they're going to kind of hand it to him no matter what either way if he starts week 1 they're going to probably give him half the season to get it together ultimately i don't think he's going to get it together and he's going to get benched for Sam Darnold and then i think Sam Darnold is not going to play that good and then they're going to swap him in and out or the other scenario is Baker Mayfield is a little too late in the off season he's not going to win the starting job week 1 Sam Darnold is going to be there week 1 He's going to be given less than half the season because Baker Mayfield is that new toy that they just traded for. So Sam Darnold's not going to play good either. He's going to start three to four games. By that fourth game, he's going to get benched at halftime. Baker Mayfield's going to come in. He's probably going to give him a little bit of a spark just because it's something different. And then five weeks later, they're going to be jumbling quarterbacks again. The fans are going to be split saying, oh, go back to Sam Darnold. No, stick it out with Baker or the other way around. Like, uh, go back to Baker. No, stick it out with Sam Donald. Overall, this is just a bad situation for the Panthers. And I think they just traded it because they're, they're the team that everybody was kind of expecting to trade for Baker Mayfield. Ultimately, if you really, I think if you locked down the GM and the owner and he said, did you really want Baker Mayfield? Do you think this is the solution? They're going to say no. They gave up a fifth. And they said we we'll only pay like three million of his salary, like that's it. So like by no means do they have like a financial obligation. That by no means do they have to, you know, justify the pick that they gave up for. Like this could be like by the end of the season, like it could be over for both Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold in the NFL. And that's kind of what I'm saying. I just don't like both quarterbacks do not impress me at all. The Panthers don't have the culture nor the personnel to really lift these guys so ultimately i think it doesn't matter who starts who wins the job i think no matter what happens the starter week one is not going to make it past the halfway point of the season with sam darnold um it'll be less time because he has been there and sam baker mayfield would be the shiny toy that they kind of want to use fans will be clamoring for him if it's the other way around if baker mayfield starts week one I think he's giving a longer leash, but by, you know, the halfway point, week eight, week nine, week seven, week eight, week nine, I think he'll get he'll get benched for Sam Donald too, and fans will be calling for Sam Donald, and then ultimately they'll just play musical chairs till the end of the season, and then it'll probably get blown up. That's my opinion.
I, I don't wish bad against them. I'm just giving my honest opinion on what's gonna ha- what I think is gonna happen. Obviously, if one of these guys fulfills his potential, it'll be great. And if they fulfill it soon, and then the Panthers cut the other guy, and he's able to latch on somewhere, and you know he does well too, by all means, that'd be great. Like, but you know, I'm just giving my opinion and thinking critically on what I think is gonna happen with the Panthers and both of these quarterbacks. But that should do it for this episode of the Hard to Handle Sports Podcast. As always, if you made it to the end, I appreciate you so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.